empowered by running a huge family business while her loyal husband of 13 years takes care of their home and baby girls. Yet she secretly cheats on the side with a dangerously weak beta orbiter. When her lies are exposed, he turns the tables by going for full custody, divorce, and starts dating the affair partner's wife. This isn't even the brutal part. This real story gets increasingly darker as the truth unfolds. You'll see, you can't make this stuff up. You have been warned. Before we start, invite the like button out for dinner, but make sure you left for the toilet before the check comes. <laughs> just here to get straight to the point. My wife and I have been married since we were 25. We are both 38 now. We met in college, got married, and everything has been great. We both graduated, got good jobs, and started our lives together. Me and my wife both made good money, so money was never an issue for us. My wife worked for her dad's business, while I worked for a very large company. After a few years, my boss left the company out of nowhere and they needed someone to take over. The only person who knew how to run the department was me, so I got a major pay jump. Better bonus, better benefits. The works. So, at 28, I was making probably three times plus more than my wife. At 28, the same year, my wife gave birth to our first daughter. Then, two years later, our second. My wife due to working for her father, was able to be more diverse in working. Well, around five years ago, my father-in-law passed away unexpectedly. That left my mother-in-law and wife in a hard position, sell the company or run it themselves. My mother-in-law had no clue how to run it, so my wife said she would do it. After my wife took over the company, it did just as well as when her father ran it. With that being said, my wife got a huge pay increase more than me. I was proud of her. Going from a basic worker to running a whole company isn't easy. Anyway, our daughters started suffering from not seeing their parents. Me and my wife discussed one of us staying home. She said, The company you work for will be fine without you. Mine could go under. I agreed, so I quit my job and became a stay-at-home dad husband. I do everything. I make sure the girls are all taken care of, I cook, clean, fix things, make sure errands are run, you name it. I pamper my wife when she gets home from working. This went well for a while, until about a year ago. My wife was always very appreciative of what I did and loved it. She's become very mean lately, like just saying things like, Do you do anything? Or, How about you work for real? What? I work my butt off every day making sure you don't have to lift a finger when you get home at all. Also, I had a real job, but I quit to raise and take care of the girls, our home, and you. Not to mention, my wife has a very high mojo drive, if you know what I mean. Always has been. She quit initiating intimacy, and when I ask, she is never in the mood. That was very odd. Eventually, I quit trying. I just thought, with all the pandemic crap and everything else, she was just very stressed, and it was getting to her. I started trying harder to make her happy. Nothing ever worked. Last weekend, my oldest had a softball game, so I get everything ready and we go. During the game, I wanted to take a video for my mum and dad, since they live in another state and don't get to see our daughters that often. I forgot my phone, so I asked my wife if I could use hers. Besides, she had been attached to it all day, so it would be good for her to get off it. Anyway, she hands it to me and says she's going to get a drink and a snack. She gets up and leaves. I video my daughter when a message comes up on some app. I check, and I can't even fathom what I see. My wife and this guy from her work, who is eight years younger, are sexting and sending videos and pics. I scroll through recent messages, talking about how great the sex was, and then me. He's saying how I am some wimp who can't get a real job, that by taking care of her, I'm no real man. The worst is, my wife agrees with him. I couldn't believe this shit I saw. I was so devastated and angry, all at the same time. I heard my wife coming back, so I closed the app 
and went back to recording the game. On the ride home and when we get home, my wife keeps trying to talk to me, and I am not in the mood. Eventually, we lay in bed, and for the first time, I guess they hadn't met in a while, tried to initiate intimacy. I tell her I'm not in a mood. She says, If you are going to be a bitch about everything, you can sleep on the couch. I didn't say anything back, just got up and went to the couch, and now have been here since. I don't know how to move forward with this. I really just don't know where to start. My wife was my everything, my girls are my world, and all of that is dying. Any advice would be wonderful as I really freaking need it. Divorce her. You will get half the assets, child support, and alimony. She is not one bit remorseful. Be sure to get a good lawyer. This one's easy. Next time you have her phone, screenshot the proof and send it to yourself. Maybe under the excuse of sending yourself the video. Get the meanest lawyer you can find to divorce her. Take half her business and savings and sue for child support and alimony. Since you are a stay-at-home dad, you're more likely to get full custody than she is. Buddy, sounds like the roles are reversed on this one and you might actually benefit. Feminists will be raging at this poetry. You gave up everything for her and she threw it in your face. I'd go scorched earth. I know, people often say leaving isn't that easy. I did it. Now that I'm on the other side, I can wholeheartedly say it was the best decision of my life. Hey everyone, I want to thank you all for the advice you all gave. First off, I do have the texts, pictures, videos and everything else. Second, I don't own any of the company. It is 50-50 between her and my mother-in-law. Third, I can't sleep in the bed. I have been sleeping in the guest bedroom every night, and that is where I will be staying. To answer directly, I have decided to divorce her. Anyway, this morning I called a firm in another town to avoid anyone finding out. Thankfully, they were able to get me in this morning as someone had cancelled. After dropping off my girls, I drove over there. To make a long story short, he is a very good lawyer. I showed him what I had. He said that luckily for me, with the evidence I have, she will be pretty much screwed in the divorce. Seeing as I quit my job to raise our girls, she is never home. She is having an affair, prioritizes this man over me and my girls, she will lose easily. He basically said we will get child support, alimony, I will keep the house, and she, we will have to pay for it as long as my girls live there. Also, he stated that we could even try for more money, since I am considered no longer viable in the working world, which will help me pay for more education to get a job. Some of you were right. He said to not work until after the divorce is over. He said since you are the husband, if you do get a job, you can lose a lot of these potential benefits. He asked if I wanted full custody. I said that I don't mind my wife seeing her girls on the weekends every once in a while, but I want mostly full custody. He said since she had an affair in the marital home, I can basically do what I want, since he stated, by bringing over a strange man to the home, she put the girls in danger and it makes her guilty. So I will be going for full custody where she can get weekends once, maybe twice a month. No man will be allowed around my girls, and if there are, she could face problems if I find out. I just don't want that piece of crap around my girls. My lawyer eventually said to keep quiet until the draft is ready, and then he will issue someone to serve her. Also have it issued that she is required to leave the home. He said he should have it done sometime next week. The lawyer recommended I get an STD test, plus a DNA test on both my girls. When I asked why, he said, it is pretty rare that incidents like this are the first time they have happened. So yeah, that freaking hurt to hear and scared the hell out of me. He asked me again to just keep quiet. He said, I know it is hard and you are upset, but just shut the hell up until everything is done. Once the divorce is over, you can say whatever the hell you want to and about her, but until then, keep your mouth shut. He said, act as normal 
He said, no fights, no issues, sleep in separate beds, and don't initiate intimacy. I said, no problem, but asked him why. He said, trust me, don't do it and do as I say. I just got home and have started getting ready for dinner and acting and being normal. I will be acting as if everything is okay until she is served next week. As I can only make two updates here, yes, I actually read the rules. Any more will be on my page if anyone cares to stay updated. Thank you all for the advice so far, and especially the ones that were with some very harsh words I needed to hear. And to the one guy who asked for my wife's pics, seriously. If you're hell-bent on getting them, it seems all you have to do is ask her, and she will send them. So it isn't that hard, it appears. To add explanation to your lawyer's advice, he means don't have intercourse with her, so there won't be a pregnancy scare later on, because caged cheaters try everything to prolong the inevitable. Good luck, you got this. And I'm so sorry you're going through this. Hug your little girls a little extra. I plan to. Thank you for that. Stay strong. You're doing what's best for you and your kids, and even your wife who needs a reality check, not that you should care. It seems that she has become delusional and selfish due to her affair, and is just adopting the arguments her crappy affair partner is feeding her to justify her actions. In that state, she's not the wife you knew, she's a totally different person. Some people would tell you she's her true self and was always like this inside, but I don't think so. The dopamine addiction for being pursued and validated during an affair can cause heavy personality changes in a person's mind and generate out-of-character behaviors. The brain uses dopamine to create new neural pathways for survival purposes. It's how the reward system works to drives us to certain behaviors. Sometimes it goes totally wrong and favors narcissistic mindsets like hers. Be prepared for the shock she will receive when she learns you are divorcing her. It's possible if you are lucky that the panic of losing everything will wake her up and then, out of guilt, she might not fight back too hard and let you have what you deserve. Without things becoming too dirty, as long as she can still see the girls on your conditions, it's also possible she's in too deep and will just be outraged and angry you dare fight back for your self-respect. Sometimes it takes a while to recover from a delusion like hers. Focus on your girls, eat properly, and exercise if possible so you'll get the toxicity out and sleep more easily. Yeah, this has been going on almost a year at this point. Pretty much. He just says how she is too good to be with a man like me, and that I am worthless. I agree. This is not the woman I fell in love with and married. I don't know who this is. This is not the woman I chose to become the mother of my children. Thank you. I do work out. I actually look the same as we did when we were in our 20s. She doesn't. But I've loved the way she looked. I just don't know why she did this. I have set up an STD test and a DNA test, so I guess I will have more answers soon. Hey, I just want to thank everyone who sent me good messages over this period. I have been feeling down and things have been rough. To preface, I have talked to my lawyer about these posts on Reddit. I didn't go into too much detail of what I shared with you guys. They did tell me, though as long as I keep them brief and not super specific that I can keep posting updates, but I just have to be careful about what I put on here, to not leak too many details. That is that. So, here's a quick update. Like I said, I will be brief and not too specific for legal reasons. We will start with the tests. I was able to get an STD on myself and a paternity test on my girls. Came out that I thankfully have no disease, and I am clear. Since I've been pretty much living like a monk bedroom-wise for the last year, I wasn't all that surprised. Now for the one that I am sure most of you are wondering, the test on my two girls. Am I the dad? Before knowing the result, I told myself I would always be their dad, regardless of the results. However, I am here to say that, yes, I am their biological father. I have never been so happy to know that I am their dad. Never thought I would have to question it, but here we are. As for what has happened to my cheating wife, well, she is out of the house and I have been granted full temporary custody. 
In the future, maybe a while, I will go into more specific details. However, for now, she is out of the house. My lawyer set everything up for me to get my girls and make sure that we legally handled her being removed from the home. It wasn't pretty, but details for another time. She was served at work, and from what I know, it wasn't pretty. Like I said, though, details for another time. My girls know what is going on. My oldest knows we are separating, and one of her friend's parents split for the same reason. She has seen what happened with her friend and doesn't want us to split. She has been crying for me to let mommy come home. I will be getting them in with a child therapist to explain and help them understand, as advised by my lawyer. My youngest just wants mommy to come home and misses her. It kills me and makes me feel like a terrible father, and they probably hate me now. I have to admit, I reflected on the thoughts of letting their mother cheat on me, just to keep my girls happy and in a family unit, but of course I can't do that. Sometimes I think about allowing an open relationship and we can just wait till the girls are older, but that won't work for me. Plus, I know the girls will pick up on it and will not like it that mommy and daddy don't love each other. As for my ex, she is living with her mother at this point. My mother-in-law has called me and asked to meet. I agreed and we will be meeting at some point. She didn't ask for details as she said we will talk later but begged me not to take her granddaughters away from her. I told her, You're a great and loving grandmother, and as long as you can separate my girls from what is going on between your daughter and I, I see no issue with you being able to see them, and I will not take them out of your life. She thanked me, and that is that. My ex has been trying to call and text me, trying to figure us out. Under direction of my lawyer, he has had it set up in such a way, that I can talk to her through a trackable method, and it is purely about the girls. No more, no less. So, that is it for now. We'll probably keep updating, and once this is all over with, I will make one big update with all the details I have to be careful about as of now. Thank you. Hey everyone, I thought I would give everyone a small update on some stuff that has happened. So first off, I had Thanksgiving with my wife and mother-in-law. From here on out, I'll be referring to my soon-to-be ex-wife as, well, my wife as she is still legally my wife. I had Thanksgiving with them purely for the girls and made sure with my lawyer this was only about the girls and not about reconciliation. That was taken care of. First, I have met with my mother-in-law pre-Thanksgiving. We met and had a pretty mutual discussion mainly just things about how we will handle my daughters after. My mother-in-law did tell me some stuff about my wife's past. I guess my wife was cheated on by her high school boyfriend, didn't even know she dated anyone during that time. I guess this guy came from one of those families, according to my mother-in-law, and they told her to avoid him. Well, I guess one night she caught him with his head under another girl's dress, and I'll let you imagine what he did, you're right on the first guess. She had a couple boyfriends in college, but when she met those, she knew they wouldn't last. She said that as soon as she met me, she found her son-in-law. She says she is so sorry for her daughter's actions and will make sure that she doesn't try to do anything problematic during the divorce. Anyway, a couple days before Thanksgiving, my mother-in-law asked for me to come over for dinner with the girls. I asked her, will she be there? She told me she would, to which I said I couldn't be there if she's also invited. She said she understood, but asked if we could celebrate the holiday one last time as a whole family, for the girls. She said, I know you have a lawyer. Ask them, and if they said it is a bad idea, I get it. After consulting with my lawyer, they said I could, but to tell my wife through the app that this is purely for the girls, to avoid any confusion. So, I did. She had contacted me before about coming over. She has been begging me to see me and the girls. The girls have been begging me to see their mom. I swallowed my pride for my girls and we went. It was awkward. My wife gave our daughters a hug, which is fine, but then tried to hug and kiss me. I just avoided her and went straight to my mother-in-law and greeted her with a hug. My wife followed me and tried to act like husband and wife. She kept trying to talk to me and I answered with yes and no's while helping by setting the table up. 
My mother-in-law is religious and wanted to do a prayer. I must add that my wife sat next to me. I held my daughter's hand. My wife tried to grab mine and I pulled away directly at her touch. I know it may seem petty, but I don't want her touching me. I am an atheist, but out of respect for my mother-in-law, I go along with praying. Dinner was fine. Again, my wife tries to act like we are staying married and asking about Christmas and vacations. I guess she wants to go with us as a family. When she mentioned this stuff, I realized going over was a mistake. We finished dinner and I pretty much got up, cleaned my daughters and did the dishes, and then was ready to go. My daughters wanted to watch a movie with their mother we used to watch all the time. I gave them permission and just let them. So I joined them at the couch, but my wife came towards me and sat next to me, trying to cuddle up. Seriously. So, at the touch, I stood up and took a seat in the chair. All the while I could sense my mother-in-law getting mad at my wife. I noticed during dinner and every time my wife overstepped her boundaries as it went on for the whole night. I could tell by the looks she gave her. When the movie ended, we started to leave. My daughters both fell asleep, so I carried them to the car, went back in the house to grab something, and when I stood in the hallway, my wife grabbed my arms in tears, begging. Please take me back. We can work through this. I want to be a family. I need to be with my family. I'm so sorry for what happened. Before I could say anything, my mother-in-law grabbed her by the hair, not joking, yanked her backwards, told me good night, and immediately began yelling at her daughter. So yeah, there's that. Afterwards, I called and told my lawyer everything to make sure I did nothing wrong on my side. He said nothing indicated reconciliation, and I made that clear in the messages beforehand. So I'm fine. Days following Thanksgiving. It's anything but silence, as my wife calls me up. Thinking she wants to talk about the girls, I pick up and she starts begging to work on us. I hang up every time it's not about the girls and messages are left on read. I will only talk about the girls, and I made that clear. Besides, I'm sure they're going to want to come together for Christmas and repeat the whole Thanksgiving fiasco. I don't want to, but they could whisper it in my girls' ears. I will discuss with my lawyer, but I know what I want. Can we get a hooray for the mother-in-law in here? Mother-in-law owns half of the company and your wife is fucking around with an employee. Not a co-worker, there's a distinct difference there. I'm sure grandma is not happy with this situation. This will not be long, but things have gotten very bad for my girls. Basically, my girls had two sessions this week with their therapist. The first session went great. My girls came out what seemed to be more peaceful and calmer than usual. I talked to the therapist after, and she seemed to be very involved and understands my girls well. So, I took them to their second one, and when my girls came out, I found out. Our situation got completely fucked. Basically, the therapist explained, in age-appropriate terms, that the reason me and their mother are separating is that their mother cheated, had an affair, and betrayed their daddy. I'm not naive. I knew eventually she would, but I didn't think it would happen this soon. I went to get my girls, and basically it was a burst of tears and them climbing all over me and giving me hugs crying, saying they love me. I am happy they love me, but this is not what I wanted to happen to my girls. I asked the therapist why she told them. She said, The girls knew you two are separating, and the girls noticed you seem to be really mean and unloving towards their mother. Your girls aren't stupid. They know how you are, and they know how you treat their mom. They wanted to know why you are separating. I told her I tried to walk around it the best I could. She told me, But the girls are not going to progress in therapy if we don't tell them. I am not going to go into detail on what exactly was shared between them, but I know it was age-appropriate. But now they know the age-appropriate version of their mother being unfaithful. We get home and my girls won't let go of me. They are literally crying the whole night through. So I order in food, I put on their favorite movies in my bedroom, 
and we laid there all night. I can't cry with them, but I'm dying from the inside as I can feel them hurting this deep. When I noticed they were asleep, I went to the bathroom and just cried. My wife doesn't even realize the pain she is causing our girls. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. The therapist told me we could try medication for a bit, till they get used to the new normal. I refused to do so, which she supported, and said it was just an option, as I am not drugging them. Disclaimer, she cannot give the meds. She said they would need to see their primary doctor, and they would probably diagnose my girls with something. That would allow them to medicate them. What the fuck? I would rather deal with my daughter's emotions the healthy way. I won't have to worry about Christmas, as my daughters hate their mother now. How do I know? My oldest said she never want to see her mom again. My youngest follows what her older sister says, even though she may actually agree. I was shocked. I said, you don't hate her. You may be mad, but you don't hate her. I tell the oldest that her mom loves and cares about her. My oldest just said, no, she doesn't, and then just cried into my arms until she fell asleep, and so did my youngest. This, this is my life now. I don't think there will ever be a good time to bring it up with the girls. And as their therapist said, they notice that you are the one being mean to their mom. Kids are very observant, and they should not be forming their opinions based on half-truths. There is another story in Reddit wherein one of OP's kids grew to resent him because they never told her that it was her mom that cheated and stepdad was mom's actual affair partner. Also, their initial reaction is very understandable. There is probably a little bit of guilt. Since they initially thought you were the bad guy, just continue to be there for them and give them lots of hugs. Tell them none of this is their fault and you both love them still. If you don't want them growing up with anger towards their mom, then discuss it with their therapist on how you can do that. That doesn't mean they have to forgive mom, just learning to let go and not let it define them. Good luck to you and the girls. I don't think there will ever be a good time to tell them what happened but I would at least be in the room with them when they are told. Couldn't the therapist tell them that this will come to light? But it would be best if their father was at least in the room? This doesn't sound right to me. It gives me these icky vibes. That is what I wanted. I knew eventually they would start to catch on, and I eventually wanted them told. But I thought it would be much, much later. That therapist should not have told the kids without your permission. I'd be furious if she did that to me and my kids. Of course they need to be told, but it should have been your decision, not hers. I cannot believe the responses I'm reading here. The daughters did not need to be told. They do not need to be burdened with this kind of adult thing. For the sake of the children, Mom and OP could both tell them that they had a big disagreement and can't live together anymore. It isn't a lie. It just doesn't lay bare the parent problems that has nothing to do with them. What the therapist did is parental alienation. The children should have their mom in their lives unless the mom was mistreating them, not because she did something mean to OP. Being a cheater does not mean being a bad mother. And depending on where OP lives, courts look on parental alienation much worse than cheating when it comes to the best interests of the child. If OP was a good father, he would encourage a strong and healthy relationship between his kids and their mom. That's what good parents do. I wanted them told something to the lines of closer to what you were saying. The therapist was like, even though it wasn't lying technically, the girls may see it as such when they get older. I was wanting to be with them when they would be told as well. To clarify, as of now, I loathe their mother. I want nothing to do with her. However, she is a good mom and was good to the girls, even if she is the reason for all the pain the girls are going through. I wanted them to have a relationship with their mother. I am sure my girls will eventually calm down and want to have a relationship with their mom, but it will just take them time. As far as legal, I called my lawyer this morning. He said that since it was the decision of the therapist and not by me, that doesn't really get me into trouble where I live, especially how she did it as well. Thankfully, she didn't say it in adult terms. Just in the most simplest of ways, she said that Mom betrayed Dad's trust by being close friends with another man. Obviously not exactly what she said, but I think you will get it. My oldest was smart enough to connect the dots, I think, 
since a good friend of hers' parents divorced when her mom had an affair. My youngest just followed her sister in being upset, I think. Not 100% though. Just to clear up real fast though, the girls are doing better now. They are still going to the same therapist, but they are doing better. Kind of coming to the realization still. My daughters say they don't hate their mother anymore. However, they have made it very clear that they don't want to see her yet for a long time. Their words, not mine. We will see how that goes. My wife has been made aware of them knowing. She tried calling my girls. They answered, but my wife has since been a bit more respectful of mine and my girls' boundaries. I think the realization is starting to hit her. Anyway, about the affair partner. Already knew he was garbage, but this man is truly awful. So someone asked me in the comments if there was a betrayed spouse on his side. I didn't know back then, but now I do. I started looking through some stuff of my wife's work. I was able to find a piece of paper with all employees' numbers and emergency contacts. I called his emergency contact. It was his wife's. Turns out, he is married. I didn't think he was. Also, he has a toddler. Well, I told his wife everything, and she didn't believe me and hung up. A little later, she calls me back and asks to meet up. So I meet her, and I show her everything. She asks if we can go to my car. We do. Within a second of closing a door, she burst into tears, crying, saying, how could he do this to me? What did I do wrong, etc. I told her she didn't do anything wrong and gave her my lawyer's number. After that, she asks, for how long? I said, I think a year, maybe a bit longer. She then goes from upset to boiling anger. I saw it hit her hard, so I asked her, why? She proceeds to rip her hair off. It was a wig. She then tells me she just beat cancer. I guess after their child was born, they found some stuff odd while she was in the hospital. After taking some tests, they found a tumor. So over the last year and a half, she had two surgeries, has gone through chemo and was on medication. She looked very good and healthy, so I was surprised. She said she beat the cancer, but they haven't been together in like two years. She said between her pregnancy and cancer, she couldn't. She got really sick while pregnant. Then her cancer almost got her life. Once she started feeling a bit better, she felt horrible in herself. She started gaining weight from the meds, lost her hair, and wasn't as pretty as she used to be. She said, I was now at the point where she could have intimacy and was going to surprise him soon for being a caring, loving husband. That is off the table. She started crying about her child growing up in a broken home, and I consoled her. Her reaction came out of nowhere as she then tried to get with me. I said, no, you are not in the right state of mind, and this is not healthy. She backed off, apologized, and thanked me for my honesty, then proceeded to ask for the evidence. I gave it to her, and she went home. We have texted a couple of times, since we are both the betrayed spouses so we will keep in contact. We are just helping each other through the process. So, thank you for the few people who mentioned looking for the other betrayed spouse. I didn't even think about it. Cheaters literally destroy everything in their path. I am really glad you were able to keep a level head during this situation with her. I also think you should be proud that you were able to support her and I am sure she does. I think it will be good that you two have some contact for emotional support and to help her get through the tough days that you know will come. You had the help of Reddit for some advice and emotional outlet and she can use you the same way. You will both get through this together. Finally, I am glad your kids stated they don't hate their mother. You are an amazing father and person to be able to go through all this and understand the value of them still trying to eventually have some relationship with her. Not a lot of people can do what you have done. I appear so. Yes, me and her will stay in touch. I was trying to make a joke about we're all in this together, Christmas vacation reference, and I got her to giggle a little bit, so I was happy about that. I am too about my girls. 
Let me start by saying hats off to you for the way you handle the whole issue from breaking the news to helping and supporting her without taking advantage. Secondly, destroy your cheating wife and affair partner for their horrible actions. They made crappy, selfish decisions and should face max consequences. Tell her mother about the other betrayed spouse and how she deliberately hurt a cancer-surging mother of an infant. And lastly, more power to you. You have shown strength, honor, and resolve that most betrayed spouses can't. Now it leaves me with that option. Tell her mother that her daughter deliberately and knowingly went for a married man who had a family while his wife was fighting cancer while having to accept her fate of leaving her little child. I want to tell her mother, but that will be something I need to discuss with my lawyer. I don't want this to affect the case in court negatively. I'm a petty and vindictive person. I would invite the other betrayed spouse to Christmas at your house and introduce her to the mother-in-law and then indicate how strong she is, being pregnant and fighting and beating cancer all in one year, while her husband and her daughter showed their support by matching their socks. But I'm a hateful person and I'm not the forgiving type. Don't forget, lightning could strike twice. Maybe you two are a match? Actually, I did invite her to Christmas for dinner with her toddler. She has kicked him out. I do know that much, and she could use someone to talk to, and I could too. My mother-in-law is a good person, and trust me, is not exactly proud of her daughter anyway, so I don't want to hurt her more. And concerning the betrayed spouse, yes, she is beautiful, and she is sweet and smart. But that would be a weird way to start a relationship. Just worried about my girls right now. Hey everyone, so I'm already being asked about Christmas with the other betrayed spouse. The answer is, yes we did, and it was very nice. Honestly, it was wonderful. The whole day was really amazing, all things considered. I laid out a lot of the girls' presents from Santa. This will probably be the last year my oldest believes in Santa, so I need to make it count. Anyway, I lay out the presents early, still dark, no sun, and the girls wake up probably within 15 minutes saying that Santa had came. I drag my tired ass out of bed and the girls open their presents. They were very happy. After I popped on a movie and the girls snuggled up next to me and they fell asleep instantly. I eventually got up and made some coffee. My youngest woke up and said, I'm hungry, Daddy. So I put an apron on her and let her help me make breakfast. My oldest then woke up joined us and we ate together. They played with their presents and had a blast. It made me very happy. I need them to get ready later in the evening so they could go see their mother and grandmother. I'm usually more strict on them about being ready on time, but with everything happening, I will admit I have been more lenient. They get ready and say they really don't want to go see their mom. I told them that their mom loves them. My therapist has said I need to encourage their relationship for proper growth Plus, if I don't, she said my wife could use it against me in court as isolation. She said the girls can make the decision to have a relationship with their mother when they are older. Also, my wife knows of the therapist, and they have talked too. She basically told my wife that she betrayed her husband, and it is clear that her husband is the girl's favourite parent to be with. They are going to need to see a lot from her, for them to eventually trust and love her again. Just before the girls left, I made sure to tell him, don't punish grandma for your mother's actions. Go for grandma. They agreed. I took them and it was pretty easy going. I got there and called for my mother-in-law. She came out and grabbed the sleepover stuff of the girls. They were going to stay the night for Christmas. My mother-in-law asked if they could beforehand. I asked my lawyer and he said it was fine. However, don't leave them there for days or do it often. But that night was fine. I did tell the girls that if they wanted to come home at any time, that all they had to do was call me and I would come get them. As I was leaving in my car, my wife walked out of the house towards my mother-in-law who was waving me off. I don't know what they said, but my wife said something to my mother-in-law while she had a confused face herself 
and my mother-in-law gave her a stern face. I thought, oh boy. My wife then looked at me with tears in her eyes and also started waving. I just drove off. I had left food in the oven and everything timed to be ready and warm for when the other betrayed spouse to showed up. She deserves a name. Let's name her Amelia. She eventually did, and when she arrived, she didn't have her toddler with her. I asked where he was at. She said that her in-laws wanted to have him over for Christmas, and so did his father. Basically, she ran the same deal as me through our lawyer. I was like, that's actually great. She was in a pretty dress, leggings, fluffy boots, and honestly, wearing a nice wig. We ate dinner and just talked about our past and got to know each other. After dinner, we went to the couch and I turned on a movie. We talked about other stuff. Eventually, I got a bottle of wine. I don't drink often, but I usually like a certain wine on Christmas. She asked if she could have some. I asked her if she really can take it. She said yes, so I poured a glass in for her. Our conversation basically went from our past to our interests, to our current issues, crying involved and eventually joking and laughing. As we drank more, we joked more. Two bottles later, the jokes stopped happening. Our conversation turned more sensual. Basically kinks, what we want, miss, and other stuff. We both found out that we are pretty much similar in this aspect. She said that my wife was lucky and messed up. I told her, so did your husband. I know some of you said I should affirm her last try at me by saying that she is pretty, but I just thought it was a bad thing at that time and wrong to do when it came to being intimate with her. This time I did say it, and she said she knows. I said, you can actually take that wig off if you don't want to wear it. I said, you look amazing without it. You are very beautiful with a pixie cut. She took it off and cried out a funny, thank you. We kept talking about that and other stuff, and eventually started watching a movie while cuddling. Now mind you, we were both pretty drunk. When me and my wife used to cuddle, my wife actually liked it, and it relaxed her when I would rub her breast slightly. Not like hard groping or pinching, but more like a massage. Apparently I was doing it to her out of habit. I noticed when she eventually said, that feels good. I freaked out and stopped and apologized, saying I didn't realize I was even doing it. She said it was fine and asked if I should keep doing it as it felt nice and relaxed her. So I did. Not going to lie, I liked it. She noticed and hugging me more. She asked if I wanted her to stop. I told her I liked it too, and she said she wants to keep going. So we did that for a few minutes, before she kisses me, and I kissed her back. This eventually leads to a part that I can't share here. So I'll skip to the part where we explored the living room, kitchen, and the office to when I led us to bed, where it ended in cuddling, some tears and eventually falling asleep. Next morning, we ate breakfast and got showered. I saw she got fresh clothes with her, so I asked her, did you plan on this? She laughed and said, no, a girl always has an extra pair of clothes. She then asked me as she was leaving, did you feel anything last night? I was honest and said, yes. However, we need to make sure to think about our kids and these feelings aren't false. She agreed and said we will explore them later. She actually gave me a kiss on the cheek and thanked me for a great night and asking me to text later. I went and picked up my girls and they actually had a good time. They said mom was on her best behavior for the most part. So, right now I just finished prepping dinner and will be spending the evening with my girls. Thank you everyone. These Reddit posts are my therapy. Hey everyone, I know it has been a couple months since I last updated. Things have just been very busy, so this won't be long. I don't blame any of you thinking this is fake. Reddit is full of liars, stirrers and storytellers. Anyway, girls are doing much better between their therapist and activities. They are still having their moments, but they are doing much better. As for me and Amelia, we still talk almost daily, but have done nothing physical since. We have met once since, and we discussed that even though we do not regret what we did, we shouldn't have done it. Now for my wife. For a few weeks after Christmas, she was still trying pretty hard to get me to talk to her. 
However, that has stopped for the most part. She now has a lawyer. My lawyer was made aware and has said that our meetings will be coming soon. She has realized that I'm actually done and that she can't get me to change my mind. I'm sure they will want to try reconciliation, but that will not be happening. She is still calling and texting me every now and then, trying to get me to reconsider, but she gets left on read. As for the affair partner, he has actually been arrested. Don't have details for now, but I've heard he confronted my wife at work and they got into a huge verbal altercation, where she threatened to call the cops. He then assaulted her, which lead to the workers there getting involved and pretty much dropping him to protect her. Cops showed up, arrested him, wife is pressing charges. I am sure he will be getting a lawyer against her for their affair, but I haven't heard anything more on that front. Mother-in-law told me this, in the hope I would want to see her daughter. I know because after telling me this, she told me they both think I'm welcome to check up on her and go see her right now. Don't judge my mother-in-law yet, because she told me she would understand if I didn't go and added, he blacked her eye and busted her lip. Karma is a bee and this is hers. I have not seen my wife and neither have the girls since the incident. Other than this, unless something crazy happens, you probably won't hear from me until after our first meeting with our lawyers. Wow. Imagine what your wife is thinking. I threw away my entire life, destroyed my family, and ruined myself financially. For a sleazy guy who beat me to pulp at my job. Goodness, some people out there. I will say he only hit her once, and it was after she hit him. So, he is much bigger than her, so I am sure one was enough, but this is a very odd and messed up situation for everyone involved. Very odd, very fricked up, and very much the sole responsibility of your wife. She's an absolute mess. I hope your girls are adjusting well and doing okay. Don't worry about your cheating wife and her attempts trying to reconcile. Focus all your energy on therapy for the girls and yourself. Much love. They are doing better, thank you. Hey everyone, just wanted to give a quick update on everything. First, I need to apologize. I did not update you after our first meeting with our lawyers. A lot has just happened, and life gets in the way sometimes. However, I am going to try to summarize as much as I can. Here we go. To begin, my girls. They are not as good as I was hoping. They were making really good progress, and were doing much better. However, as the day gets closer to the divorce, and them realizing we are actually separating, they have both began to have issues. Their therapist said that the girls accepted it, but really thought you two would work it out. Realizing you aren't is hitting them hard. My youngest is doing okay, but I am concerned for my oldest. She is actually depressed, and it is worrying me. I am taking the proper precautions with her therapist and doing what she recommends. She is saying we may have to medicate her for a while, but I am still resistant on that front. However, it may get to a point where that may be the only option. She's active enough for a girl her age and seems healthy, but I have noticed some of her clothes not fitting anymore. I don't think she is eating as much, and I have discussed with her doctor to basically put extra calories in her food to help her gain weight. I hope we can get this figured out, because she is really starting to scare me. I feel I have failed as a father, because I have never wanted my daughter to be like this. I am not religious, but if you can, please pray for my daughters. Next, as usual, me and Amelia are still in contact every day. We are getting along great and things are getting easier. However, some bad news for her. No, nothing to do with her health or her child, thank goodness. However, her cheating husband has skipped town. I am not surprised by this. He left shortly after he was bailed out for assaulting my wife, came to find out that my wife was the last to have contact with him. I guess my suspicions were correct. She was going to press charges and he threatened to sue due their affair, and he claimed she used her power over him to initiate the affair. She dropped the charges after this. He isn't going to sue, and he left. No one knows to where, and his parents claim they have no idea. Do I believe them? No, but I have no way of proving that, and frankly don't care much. As for meeting with our lawyers, there wasn't a lot of drama to be honest, 
it was basically just my lawyer giving my demands. After the aggressive incident with her affair partner, I pushed for full custody. My lawyer laid everything that I wanted out. Her lawyer didn't even listen. He said that for the sake of the children, the two of us need to reconcile. My lawyer laughed and said not a chance in hell and started counting everything up with his fingers. Summed and brought up everything that has happened, what she did, and adding the issues with her affair partner for good measure. He said, these are our demands, accept or we will see you in court. Once again, her lawyer just wanted to reconcile. My lawyer said, very well, we will see you in court. Two weeks later, I get a call from my lawyer. She agreed to all terms, as long as she got the girls two weekends a month and alternating holidays. She originally said all weekends, but my lawyer said no to that. I agreed to the terms. She's still their mother, and I hope she has learned to make our girls a priority after all of this. I feel strange to keep typing wife, but I trust you understand I mean to say Zoom to be ex-wife. Anyway, so how did she look? She looked awful. She looks borderline anorexic, like she has aged 10 years, and I even think her hair may be falling out. The irony, I know a wig wouldn't look good on her, as wig hair looks too full and healthy, so it wouldn't match the rest of her look. Even though I do not love her, she is still the mother of my daughters, and I do not like seeing her that way. I asked my mother-in-law to get her some help. She doesn't want to, saying this is her punishment. I told her even if seeing her daughter deteriorate isn't enough, she is still the mother of her granddaughters. She needs to be there for them, and she's in need of help. My mother-in-law agreed, so she is currently working with her to get her back on her feet. My wife has actually left me a note to meet up with her in person, in public, one last time to talk before the divorce. I agreed, and we are meeting sometime next week to have one final talk. It will be recorded and in public. We are still married, but the end is the first week of July. So a few more weeks and it will be over. Thank you all for the support, and I hope to be on the other side very soon. I just love the transition of power here. Your soon-to-be ex-wife and her affair partner spoke so high and mighty about themselves, and talked so shitty about you. Now the big tough guy has skipped town, leaving his family behind like a typical lowlife, and your soon-to-be ex-wife is just humbled and filled with regret. It's not remorse though, she regrets being caught, and she regrets the situation she put herself in. Don't let her tell you she has any remorse whatsoever. This meeting she requested is her Hail Mary. She still thinks she has a chance, and she's desperate for anything other than the garbage pit she's made out of her life. She's living the, I fricked around and found out lifestyle now, and hates it. Keep being strong for your girls. Your soon-to-be ex-wife won't be a very good long-term example given her morals. Hey everyone, sorry I didn't update earlier, but I've been caught up with everything especially with two active young ladies during summer. I'm going to hit a few points, then get to my soon-to-be ex-wife and our meeting. Against my better judgment, we have decided to put my oldest on meds for a while. I discussed with her primary doctor, therapist, and my soon-to-be ex-wife. She will be on the lowest dosage possible until everything settles. Once we see she seems to have adapted to the way of living, we will start weaning her off of them. My youngest seems to be adjusting well with no real issues. She does say she wishes we would live together again, but understands why we don't. She is very smart for her age. We still have no clue where her affair partner is. He has pretty much vanished from the earth. Me and Amelia still talk every day. Now to the part I'm sure you want to hear. Me and my ex, I refuse to write wife from now on, met at the park where we usually took our girls. Everything was videoed in case she tried something. She didn't. Most of our discussion was about the girls and that she agreed it was best if they stay with me full time for a while during our separation. She said she isn't in the right mindset to be a mom right now. She said, Clearly, I have failed as a mother and I need to learn how to be one again. Like I said, no real need to go into detail about that part as it was mainly discussing the girls. Now for the final part. As I got up to leave, 
I decided to end it there as it was better to just leave end close that chapter with that. She did ask if we could stop the divorce, get counselling and try again. I said, absolutely not. I told her that with everything you said and did to me, everything you allowed the affair partner to say and do to me, I reminded her that what he did to his wife and child, while she must have known, everything she did to our girls. I asked her, do you really think you deserve a second chance? She shook her head and said, No, I don't. At this point, it was the first time I felt pretty fired up, so I let it out. I started going on about how I loved her, gave up my career for her and our girls, did everything for her. She, of course, started crying. I went on and on, but eventually, I just stopped. She kept saying she was sorry. I, of course, responded with, Sorry, don't mean shit anymore. I then asked, What the hell was going through your head when you started this shitstorm? Now, I don't know if anyone on here said anything about this, but I do remember someone sent me a link to a video on YouTube where some guy read my story and him and others started discussing my situation. I skimmed through the comments and many of them were right based on what she said next. She blurted and I quote, I wanted to be the one at home. I had a confused look on my face. Then it all came out of her. She never wanted to run her dad's business. She wanted me to do it. She never wanted to work 40 plus hours at the business. She wanted to be a mom and wife. She just kept going. I wanted you to take over and run it. I wanted to be the homemaker. I wanted to be the one waiting at home with meals prepped. I wanted to be the one playing and taking care of our girls. I never wanted to be a breadwinner. I never wanted to be a business owner. She literally went on for a good 30 minutes spouting this. After she was done, she looked like she was about to pass out. I asked her, then why did you make me quit my job and say you wanted to run the business? She said, I wanted you to say you would do it. I told her, not my business. I have never worked in that field before. I would have no clue what's going on. Plus, wouldn't it be kind of awful of me to say, I will run your dad's business? She said that was what she wanted. I asked, then why didn't you say that? Apparently she wanted me to say it because she didn't want to admit to wanting to be a stay-at-home wife. I then blew up asking her, all of this over some stupid pride. I wouldn't have cared if you wanted to be at home and admitted to it. I was so angry at this point and still am fuming. I then asked, what does that have to do with the affair? She said that during the pandemic and towards the end, she was working so many hours and she got jealous and angry of the fact I was at home with the girls. I guess the snake could smell it in the air, seeing her at work. So her affair partner started telling her all those nasty things about me and how if I was a real man, she could be at home. So that lead to the affair and she said she did once try to end it. He stopped but started talking ill of me again and the cycle repeated to the point it became a consistent thing. Basically, she would try to end it and he would insult me and make her angry and envious and she would fall back into the affair. Combined with her being mean and nasty to me because of her jealousy, that all could have been avoided with basic communication from day one. At that point, she said, I just want my family back. I just want my family back and for things to go back to normal. I was so devastated and angry that I just got up and left. So after that, there has been a lot of anger in my heart and I'm so over being pissed off because of this woman. Also, I forgot to mention a bombshell that dropped back around late last year. My ex was pregnant with her affair partner's child. She ended up having an abortion. Mother-in-law told me that she was acting odd and seeming sick and thought she was faking it for attention. Nope, she was pregnant. That is another reason she was going crazy at that time. Sorry for adding this all the way at the end. I meant to add originally, but I got re-pissed writing this down so forgot adding it. Well, there you have it. That's it for so far. We'll update later. I'll end it here for now.
I call bullshit on her reasons. You don't go sleeping with another guy due to you being upset about something you requested in the first place. If I recall the story, she not only requested you stay home, she was on an emotional high knowing she was successfully running the business. It almost sounds like she became the breadwinner, so she thought she could do as she pleased. One of those success goes to your head type of things. Now she is grasping at straws to try and make you believe it was some emotional blackmail by the affair partner. If anything, it makes it worse. She basically admitted that she tried to stop, yet made many, many decisions to once again sleep with him, knowing it was wrong. On a side note, this story showing how strong you have been with your children and your resolve versus your wife has been quite inspiring. You have set a terrific example of how to be a strong husband and father in the presence of adversity. Keep up the good work and good luck. I actually believe the reason. I mean, she wouldn't be the first person to get mad over, you didn't read my mind. <laughs> Happens a lot and often, mostly a problem when it's related to big issues. The rest boils over to, if I'm doing okay now, it will be okay forever until it's not okay. The enjoyment and pride would have been there until there's a setback. You get a mix of shattered illusion mixed with, I never really wanted this, plus the, my husband has it easy now, not saying that he did, but I would bet it passed through her head, top it with the resentment of he should have known what I wanted. Final to the mix is an snaky prick that tried his luck, and he did get lucky. Pregnant with her affair partner's baby. Wow. Now that makes me wonder if she knew way before all of this, when she first tried to initiate when you just caught her. Dude, that just makes everything worse. Hope you holding up okay, man. Good luck. I will say, based on timing, she didn't know she was pregnant until after we separated. Doesn't really make it better, but it's still something. Your ex-wife has piss-poor communication skills. She can't pressure you into something and then blame you for being pressured into something. You didn't want to give up your career. You just did what she communicated to you that she wanted. If you'd stayed as the breadwinner, she would have resented you for her father's business failing. If you took over a business you were unfamiliar with, she would have resented you for causing her father's business to fail. If she sold the business, she would have resented you for making her give up her father's legacy. If you did as she asked, she would have resented you for not being the breadwinner anymore. She is blaming you for being incapable of solving an impossible problem. She's also blame-shifting the fault to you again, which shows that she hasn't taken responsibility for her actions. It's a clear indicator that she has no true remorse. Even if you did get back together, she'd still be blaming you for her actions. Most people struggle to admit when they are crappy people and your ex-wife was a really crappy person for a long time. She can't change anything about herself if she doesn't see herself as the problem. That's like a mechanic trying to repair an invisible car. She gave up on the marriage and motherly role long before she cheated. Your daughters are far better off being raised by someone who can teach them to be accountable for their actions. Even with your eldest daughter being on medication, she cannot get better if she isn't willing to put in the work and take responsibility for her recovery. You need to be that example for her in order to help her heal. The medication is just there to help lighten the load. I'm glad you were able to trust the medication and medical advice once it became obvious she was struggling to cope. Now the real work begins. Good luck, my dude, you've got this. Don't slow down your momentum over some narcissistic Darvo tactics. You have awesome children who depend on you. They are the good thing that can still be salvaged from this nightmare. Don't give up on them. That brings us to the end of this real story. Too brutal to be real for some, but we all know, unfortunately, worse things actually happen too. OP never expected his life to turn the way it did, but he seemed to have done the best he could. Do you partially agree with his cheating ex-wife? Was it his fault too by not standing up to giving up his job? Is she still manipulating him or do you sense a bit of honesty coming from her last confession? This is a story in which the hits just kept on coming. From Amelia's brutal struggle and overcoming sickness to the ex-wife being judged by her own mother, who rather sees her suffer and repent for her cheating. 
share your opinion and tips as OP will have access to the comments section. Which brings us to next part. Please be respectful as OP shared his story with the world while needing support. As this story is quite fresh, we're left to wonder about the status of OP's relationship with Amelia or how his ex-wife will be doing going forward and how the girls are doing when achieving the much-deserved peace in their minds. I expect there will be updates coming in the future, and when they do, I will add them in the comments section down below. But for now, be sure to invite the like button out for dinner, but make sure you left for the toilet before the check comes. <laughs> See you in the next one.